I'm sure the bus does move when it wants to. Just right now, because yeah, because there's the fighting skirmish, in the streets. There's, there's fighting in the streets, and everyone's been evacuated, or so we can tell anyway. There's actually quite a few buses. Now that I think about it. So there's another one further down as well. They act this nice cover for. Not enough back. people. Like there's not. A, you can't fit many people on the monorail, so you, you have to use buses to get more capacity on the roads. Anyway, so you were, you were. I think the guess was correct. The both teams do want to run basically a mirror, but you do see Luke on the Winston variety. This is where Far East Society have an advantage. This first neutral, we already have an advantage to them in these neutral fights. It's where they've fared the best, but also the Reinhardt against the Winston is an extra bit of leg up. And I, I don't even know if I would say advantage, but certainly they've looked even and they would have a leg up here. You still are looking for Global Esports to maybe find something with Luke. Luke's if he can survive, oh. he's got to get this primal. And if they had got a couple more shots into him while he was in the air. By the way, Far East Society, uh, Vips is in over Sal Bob. Just a bit of a side note there. There's only two thirds, so this is where Global Esports have to go ahead and commit. And they've got some answers here, but Fari Society have some ultimates of their own, so already grab out. They can pick up some members. They found Xeno flies mech. Vips a bit early on the transcendence, I might say, but the shadow out from Satchok is nice, and they're able to get the kills they need, and that is the advantage that Ryan brings you against the Winston. Speaking of early on the transcendence, Xeon Flux as well had to use this one to save Luke, who was a few percentage points off the primal, so he could have saved himself, which would have prevented the transcendence from coming early, which would have been then used to counteract Ridden Evil's uh, Graviton Surge set at a better timing position. So Global Esports, sadly, just didn't quite have the timings lined up for their re resources and now look for a very early B defense because as expected Friday Society do win this neutral, do get the cart rolling early, the yeah. question now becomes how much further do they get before they're stopped up? Yeah what Global Esports really want to do here is commit grab, that'll get Sound Barrier out of the way and whether or not they lose the fight, let's assume they do, they give themselves an opportunity to maybe take another fight. Gonna make the move in now. Self-destruct forward from Aros is nice. Try and cut them off. And they end up actually picking up Xeno Fly, but unfortunately on the front side of the fight, Fari Society just kind of losing members, really. Not really putting up much of a fight, just getting out damaged. Little I mean they just got out fragged. I don't know how that went wrong, but it did. Well, Sound Barrier was even committed there as well, and how it went wrong was where they lost a member early, Red and Evil goes down. That's one of the main sources of damage for them and sources of safety as well with the double bubbles and for Fire East Society playing five versus six. There's already grab on the other side. We already know Kim Kutate does a lot of damage on this area. That combination for Global Esports means a pretty early hold on the B. Question answer now. One corner past Fire Society. That's it for now. Now Fire Society are on the back foot, even as they start to come up on ultimates. Global Esports will have a lot of answers at their disposal. Fire Society gonna push forward. We're gonna press the go button on Red and Evil's grab. That shot has an Earth Shadow as well, so they got the weapons to use. Global Esports have very similar ones to use as well. Nice cover there for a moment with the Defense Matrix. Actually, early sound barrier from Faith to try and push forward. Fari Society, they end up having to commit a Transcendence here. That's a nice timing on the grab, though, because Xeon Flux's Transcendence is just on the back end. They end up, instead of timing that one right there, Fari Society really taking advantage of a window that Global Esports left open. And that's a huge mistake for Global Esports because both support ultimates laid on top of each other. Transcendence and Sound Barrier used together. And then when the Graviton Search from Red and Evil comes down, guess what? Neither of those support options available. And they didn't get enough value because Global Esports have no kills to really come towards them to make the trades worth it, to make the ultimate expenditure worth it. That costs them that entire B defense. So the grab comes, uh, sorry, the cap comes through, but now at least the shoe is on the other foot insofar as Kim Yute has a grab and there is no good answer for Fari Society. Self-destruct buys them a bit of time. They are still able to push in on top of the grab clean up these members. So when they don't make big mistakes here, Global Esports are able to find the openings to get these fight victories. This time they have their own grab, this time they have their own sort of ability to just get in there, push members away, self-destruct being played in by Xeno Flying as well. Fire Society, happy to just camp B for now, already pretty decent progress. They got a bit of time to work with just under four minutes to find some more ultimates. Fire Society just eating chunks in the rotation. It's not even close, man. And then the Earth Shadow to come out. Just keep them on the back foot. No trouble cleaning this one up. Here is Global Esports. Fire Society looking a little bit lost. Eros makes it away and he'll be happy to be able to do that. The rest of his teammates not so lucky. And for Global Esports, they can keep holding this high ground position. And this is just preventing the cart movement at all. And the cart's actually sliding backwards now. So yeah. Fire East Society got a lot of work ahead of them. So happens when you leave it on a downhill without the park break on. 
A lot of work ahead of them, but they will have the ultimates to back it up. And also a nice rotation to at least get the fight to the cart. They don't have to fight just all the way through this street until they get there. So now they look to drill down loop. Forces transcendence from Xeon Flux, but Charge comes through to find Faith. Tempo transcendence out of Vips as well. And Ari's just saying, looking to push further in. Self-destruct does not get the mileage they need. And Xenofly ends up losing, losing he has to reset. his life. So... Bit of a wild grab, but it finds Luke, and that's more than enough. And I'll be honest, because Clover East was forced to fight so early, they intercept the rotation from Fire Society around that coast side. And because all the ultimates are used now, yes, Fire Society do win this one, but at what cost? Because Global Esports, they don't really use much in response. Xenofly self-destructs to maybe catch something to push for an opening to refight and re-engage. Well, the re-engage will happen now, but at a huge, I would say, ultimate advantage for Global Esports. Yeah, again, this is where they can just grab into a defenseless Fire East Society. No transcendence, no sound barrier available, and it's a pretty easy cleanup from there. Self-destruct lobbed up, and hold on a second. With Earth Shatter. Life. The follow-up just not clean enough on the grab, and the Shatter also not getting anything oh, done. And Fire East Society just out fragging. I mean, it's almost like Global Esports thought they could throw in the grab and it would be a foregone conclusion. They didn't actually end up going in and doing the work and the self-destruction just ward off Global Esports was barely enough and suddenly Global Esports are massively on the back foot. Fiery Society ahead in the fight and now coming up on Ultimates. They're going to push this one over the line. It's about 1 yep. minute 40-ish available. That was honestly a decent finish for Fiery Society. And there's two things here to really consider. The first is after Fiery Society had the huge push around the opening of C where they had to expend most of their ultimates, in fact, all of their ultimates just to get the cart moving again. They got a pretty late kill onto Luke with the Graviton Surge that was basically solo just for him. That staggered him on the respawn. Then they got the cart pushed through a little bit further in this final bend, this final straight right towards the finish line. Global Esports dropped their Graviton Surge. When that happens, you need to see the kills. You need to see the damage come through from both their tank members, the Zarya and also their Ryan, to be able to collect the... Uh, to collect the the trade is necessary to stop the rest of the push from coming through. If that doesn't happen, the Earth Shatter needs to come down and secure it. Never really worked for Luke. Missed everybody with the Shatter. Yikes. Already lost a couple after that. Global Esports had no other response. And then suddenly Far East Society, who still had a push going, got their own grab again. The second grab in the same fight. Yeah. And Far East Society just finished the map off that. Huge victory. Huge now result just for pushing this time back. And I mean... We talked about it, right? We talked about the momentum for Fari Society when they have it on their side. They they do maintain it fairly well, and if they were going to be successful on their attack, it was going to be based off that. So now we'll have to see on the defense. We talked about the critical piece being stopping the momentum of Global Esports and better yet, turning it around to generate some defensive momentum. I will also say Global Esports made two pretty big blunders over the course of that defense. One on B, yep. one on C, and both of them ended up costing them the points. So... We do talk about Fire East Society. Okay, they got some momentum towards in there. I think it was kind of gifted to them. They still have to prove they can get this and kind of steal it away from Global Esports without huge mistakes coming in to deliver it over. And for Global Esports now on their own offense to do even better. Get a better time bank, push us into that time bank scenario where they can be at an advantage. So, even team compositions, both on the Rhine. And if Fire East Society can get a good first fight on this defense, then... That's how they can maybe at least burn some time off the clock for A. And it's a good read from Fire East Society to say we're not expecting Global Esports to be running a fire here so we feel safe to play the Rhine. And for both now A and Gage, as Fire East Society have Ooh. a decent advantage on the neutral. Faith sticking up on the wall, just leaving him a bit vulnerable, a bit risky there, but they end up breaking forward a little bit and force Fire Society back off the high ground. Grandy Zordo, way too far forward, oh, trying Shatter's to find a bump, but finding Kim Gute. Shatter on the other hand though from Luke is so good. Doesn't quite go down, finally getting finished off. Fiery Society just sticking in this one for a long time, but Global Esports have the ultimates to lean on, especially with that catch on Vips. Closer respawns though for Fiery Society. So let's see if the second half of the fight can go a little bit better. Red Evil is still in this with a lot of damage and a grab. So here's the problem. Global Esports, yes, they do get an Earth Shatter out early. They do get their transcends. Oh, they get a the decent net. number of picks, but because they're not converting those into other picks, Fiery Society with a closer response and their own ultimates coming in online are going to be able to reinforce and then be able to hold this point. Satchok comes back in with his own Earth Shatter. If yeah. Global Esports do not reset by then, they're all going to get shattered, they're all going to die anyway and feed more ults over. So, Fire Society now in a decent position. Yeah. First check mark off the clock, and first check mark off the list rather to say, okay, we won that fight, now we got the ults to win number two. This is where Global Esports are a little punished for having used the Shatter and the Transcendence because both are available for Fire Society. Why did to commit that Transcendence? Oh, did not commit it too late on the draw there. 
there for Vips. Self-destruct layered in on top of the grab, but a bit too late. And they get nothing for it. Xenofly can self-destruct to preserve Mech. And it also dislodges Faris aside. Even finds look for you. And when is Vips going to press Q for goodness sake? Finally throws it out now. Too late to save Aros's mech and it's not like they're even getting kills in response the grab is there oh, no. these members still all die in it and i think far east society got handed a golden egg and threw it against the wall and this is where unfortunately for them global esports on the high ground actually booped a lot of members off i'm pretty sure vips was one of them which is why you didn't see the response earlier towards the end there as well when kim Butei drops the graviton surge grandy's auto nearly dies instantly so doesn't get new sound barrier in response far east society despite having good counters never got to apply them properly they do at least get to take an early fight here, which is nice. Best case scenario is they get some ults out of Global Esports, charge up some of their own, and have a more favorable fight later on in B. Now this first corner, very important for both teams. We are already seeing Global Esports in a position to shut Woo! down. There was at least an earlier sound barrier to get Fari Society through that one. Now Sambar out from Faith, Shatter is in from Sat Shot, Transcendence there to answer. So, all things even Stevens, Red and Evil's grab nearly available, Grandy's auto is down though, so Fari Society will start seeding grounds. Need to not lose any members, they end up losing Red and Evil, and unfortunately the retreat is not clean. In fact, they're still moving forward a little bit, not fully committing to the retreat, and they end up losing even more members than they otherwise would have. And now that your defense is down, Kim Gute just walks forward, 100 energy, so charged up, so much DPS flowing up from him. And Global Esports, they've defended against the aggression of Fire Society properly. They've then counter-attacked properly as well. So far, this attack has gone pretty well from them outside of small hurdles on top of A. This is what it looks like when you don't layer both your support ultimates together. You apply the appropriate counters at the right time. And for Global Esports, now looking to take B as well, unless Fire Society, with the ultimates that they have saved up, can actually execute. Oh, brilliant boop there from Faith off the high ground. Eating Red Needle's grab. That's nice and big. Vips as the transcendence but they still find xeno fly there with the self-destruct so fari society a little bit on the front foot here luke shatter doesn't get too much done satrock is one of his own waiting out zeon flux is transcendence throws in before it ends actually but they're still getting the kills anyway fari society had a slight lead coming into that fight in fact not even needing the grab in the end because it did get eaten Good commit from Fari Society. That's actually a huge victory, considering that the Grave got Ian. That's one of their bigger tools that they would have liked to have had. And despite that happening, they still get kills, despite all the counterplay available for Global Esports. Luke shattered. Xeon Flux used Transcendence. All those ultimates being used, Global Esports didn't get trains. Fari Society got kills through the Transcendence, through the Earth Shadow, through everything. The Graviton Surge, by the way, used by Kim Kute, yeah. wasn't enough for Global Esports to actually pick up kills. Also, once again, leading an ult charge. Unless just someone gets picked off and fragged out, Fari Society closer on support ultimates, closer on grab. The only place Global Esports actually lead is the Shatter. Satrock, though, or the Discord, a little bit low. They do have to be careful here. And I just want to go ahead and pop a tempo rally. There it is. They should be pushing with this rally as well, knowing they have the defensive options if things go poorly. Ooh, speaking of go poorly, Aros has to commit the self-destruct to preserve the mech. Is able to do that, though. So it's still even for now. And Fari Society, they've got an ultimate advantage. They should be leaning on it. That's one oh, nice. life. Okay, this with the Mimli connects. Yeah, with the mech gone, they know there's no defense matrix. They just toss out a grab. They know there's no answer either in terms of support ultimate. Xeon Flux was just shy of transcendence. Faith not quite there on the sound barrier. That was great for Fari Society. And now you're starting to think, okay, can they actually hold B? Less than one minute remaining. Still have double support ultimates. Satchok nearly on a shadow sword. He's been hitting a decent number of them. But for Global Esports, nearly six ultimates. So the answer possibly, or rather you look at the probabilities of this, is probably going to be a no because Global Esports are absolutely stacked unless Fire East Society can once again get huge value out of their ults but Global Esports get none. Global Esports should be at the camp beat. And Global Esports, I mean they made some mistakes but not that many usually. Drive out the first of all. Nothing too much for it, Xenofly, nothing for the self strike. Sound barrier already there, Grandy's auto commits his sound barrier now. That's all the ults. They find Satrock. And that's finally it. They start to break it open. Fari Society nearly managed to weather all of it and come out into an even fight. Not quite so lucky, though. And Global Esports will pick it up, get the cart back in their control. But that is as the overtime begins. So Fari Society have burned a lot of time off this clock. And I think the silver lining here is, despite Fari Society not going to be able to win this particular fight, 
going on to see, because it was an overtime push, because there's now only 130, 130, uh, yeah, just about 130 and counting down, walking into C, and only a transcendence for Global Esports, there's not going to be a huge snowball going in. Five ultimates, it costs Global Esports to push past B, and now only one to try and take C. Your goal now is to burn time off the clock and set yourself up for just one fight. You only need to win that one, and you actually end up winning the map. Bari Society have set themselves up right. Grab coming through is going to be big for Global Esports. Less than 60 seconds now, and this is where you want to push the go button if you are Bari Society. Nice placement of the self-destruct. Scatters Global Esports, and they look to take advantage. They find Luke. That also got transcendence out from Xeon Flux, who didn't save Luke in time. This is everything Bari Society need. They do lose Red Neville. Grab and just, yeah, that's really nice there. Taking that off the table for Kim Butei. Vips decides to commit transcendence. Might not have been necessary. Global Esports were retreating, but Bari Society have set themselves up adequately for what should be the last fight. Oh, whoa! Ooh. Tempo shatter from Luke Maybe. goes straight into his shield. Okay, well, Global Esports certainly aren't going to let this one go too easily. We still do have Xenofly up and available. Red and Evil. There's Here's no this grab, though. No answers to this grab. No defensive ultimates. Little Rax is already dead. Xenofly as well. The grab is massively whiffed, though. Seconds. Global Esports. They can't really get to the card here. They keep losing members on this retreat. This is going to be tough. It's going to be down to the wire if Global Esports keep it alive. And even then, they've got to touch the card and still find a way to win a fight. They do not. Fari Society hit one back, and we've got a series on our hands. And this is going to be the first map of Contenders so far in their first season of Contenders. And I've got to say, a lot of big mistakes by Global Esports ultimately there that will have costed them that map, and they'll be looking back, kicking themselves, thinking this could have been the 3-0, this could have been the hold on to B, or at least it would have been a lot of time expended on B. You compare the two B offenses, and that's really where you got to kind of draw the line to say, okay, where did the teams go wrong? Where did they go right? And for Far East Society, they were able to push through B so quickly, they have the time on C to work with. That just did not happen for Global Esports, and yeah. rightfully so, they got punished for that one. Fire Society deservedly have this victory now. And I mean, there was something very critical that I talked about needing to be there for the defense. And that was being able to stop up Global Esports' forward momentum and then, you know, get some defensive momentum on of your own, which realistically means win a subsequent fight after stopping the cart. And they did that. They actually did that a couple of times there across B. They had a number of successful fights to the point where it didn't get capped until overtime. And I honestly also think they could have had a more successful fight on A. Part of that was just good execution out of global esports. But when you look at it holistically, you've actually got to say, Fari Society, def their defense ended up being the better of the two. That's what the win was hung upon. And we move now into Escort, where that same potential strength is going to apply Global esports do need to tighten the nuts a little bit here. And I also do want to commend Fire Society for reading the opening fights well as well in terms of getting the right compositional matchups where, first of all, you have a team of Global Esports who were expecting the possibility of a fire coming through, or at least DPS coming through when they were defending A, and that's respectable that they do want to make sure that they're not caught in a position where that is just going to be an auto-lose for them. However, it does open up Fire Society to play the Rhine mirror into them, or play the 3-3 the three, three mirror, but the Rhine version of that to get an advantage. On the defense, there isn't the same respect. It's Fire Society saying, we think you're just going to go for the Rhine Goats here. They did, and they got, again, the preferable matchup because they wanted the mirror. They didn't, want, they didn't expect to see DPS. They didn't see any DPS. So on both A defense and A offense, Fire Society made the right call in terms of composition, and they were, they were rewarded twice for that. And that's the thing. You've got to just look at that on the whole and go, look, Fari Society just played a, a good game there, a good game that got them a deserved win. We can also look at the parts of that where Global Esports did make some mistakes, especially on their own defense. Their own offense was relatively fine. I do just feel that Fari Society's defense was better, but a part of you must wonder... Global Esports, maybe if they had have been a bit cleaner on their own defense, maybe wouldn't have been in that situation where they needed to cap out and go to time bank. But moving forward onto Havana now, I don't know if we're just going to see a straight 3-3 mirror because certainly we've seen Global Esports' ability and willingness well, to play other compositions. And we do see them on Havana at times. Yeah, well, I'm going to be honest, you know, at least based on what, what Overwatch League has done, you, you, do generally you, see, you do generally see a lot of 3-3 mirrors. I think it comes down to a bit of a handshake between the teams to say, okay... We want to be a three. We want to be a goats team. You're a goats team. Let's just play goats, and that's exactly what happens. So that world certainly does exist. Somebody could shake things up, and you know, 
I don't know, cross their fingers behind the handshake and say, oh, I got you. But, <laughs> I mean, this is the kind of position where, based on how Nabani has gone, I would expect mostly goats the entire way through. I would yeah. also say, for Global Esports, not going to sort of ring the, you know, the bell, the death bells or whatever right now for them to, to really say, okay, the game's over, you lost a map to Fire Society, that means the series is done for you. It's more like there's a chance for Fire Society mm -hmm. to kind of maybe get a win on Havana as well. It's a new map. Anything can still happen here. Maybe we go to Nepal. Yeah. But ultimately, Global Esports should be in control of the series. Let Nabani yeah. go as a bit of a one-off and come back strong for number four. And that's the thing. Look, even if Havana does go the way of Fari Society, you've got to look back to control and go, well, that was better for Global Esports. But the sort of second part of the Goats v. Goats discussion here is, well, that was what Fari Society won with on Numbani, so perhaps the impetus for Havana is for Global Esports to change it up. We'll have to see. I also like how Don Rombatico has a moustache, because, like, he didn't grow it. That's just an aesthetic choice. He went out and purchased a moustache to stick on his face. Just like Bob. Just like Bob. That, like, that's obviously a thing, right? That's obviously a part of Omnic fashion. You can, like, go and buy a moustache. I like that fashion is a thing that Omnics care about. Well, I mean, apparently they also care about fine whiskeys because there's that Glen Wales ad. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. They, well, they, they'll it's sell like it. It's like oil. I don't they'll know. sell it, but they, I don't know if they drink it. I think they just, I mean, it's an oil, so I think they just pour it down their face. There's also a cigar shop here. Is that, is it, is it, I assume that's for the humans. Just... Get those, on a get those pigeons out of the way. What's going on here? Global Esports. Yeah, get out. Come on. Global Esports are indeed going to be running the bunker to begin with on the defense. And uh, this is now where, you know, we've seen this somewhat before where, okay, you're running this defense, but as the attack is coming through, if you're not really stopping this card, it's eventually just going to roll past your bunker and then well, yep. you've lost control of the objective. And also in that time, Lilrax hasn't had many shots land just because everyone's kind of sat behind the card out of his line of sight. So he's very low on ult charge. Finally finding one though as Kim Yutei gets a wrap around there, able to pick off Red and Evil and that really puts a damper on Fari society. So this is where Xenofly has to be the one to touch the card to stop the movement. Usually in some cases, you would also see a May here if you're Florida Mayhem or somebody like that because you want a wall, you want somebody to constantly be contesting the card such that then you have your Bastion constantly firing on top of it to get the value out of the bunker. Because they don't have a May, they have to do that with Xenofly on the Diva. Fire Society, <coughs> excuse me, making a huge swap now. Yeah, going over to the dive has been the traditional answer to the bunker. And I mean, the uh, Infrasite is there, but honestly, a lot of the bigger ultimates for Global Esports aren't. So Fari Society, if they get a successful dive, could dislodge this. But Lil Rax has been able to charge up a lot of ultimate. Oh, that's a really strong cigar, excuse me. But Fari Society, <laughs> look, Genji, Sombra, we've seen this combination for, you know, most of these engagements now. You look back at Temple of Anubis, very standard play, Anna as well for Vips. But they have to find the positioning where they can get the cart moving again, which it currently is. Yeah, they also need to be able to... Find a way to deal with Global Esports. Slowly moving that card out of the firing line as well as they start to sort of flirt with the idea of diving. But Red Evil goes down as they drop down from that flirt. And unfortunately, Fari Society get dispatched off pretty quickly after that. And the only thing they don't need here is they definitely don't need the tank form because personally for me, at least my taste is that you want to use the tank form as a retake rather than just damage to throw yeah. into a fight because you got damage. The basic sentry mode is a ton of damage. You're not lacking for damage. You are lacking in repush potential, which is what tank form can give you. We are now looking also for Fire Society. After about two pushes, they finally will have EMP. They may have a Dragon Blade soon paired up with a Nano Boost. This is how they dismantle the bunker on Temple of Anubis. And well, again, they'll have to look for that. This is taking quite a bit of time though. That is the other factor here in the long run. The longer they take, the more impressive their own defense has to be. And whew, look for you needs to be careful. Someone's looking for him. I definitely want to see Kim Kute playing a long angle, which he currently is. That's the EMP out. It only really finds two members. The Satrock's already dead. No one's answered the immortality field, and that's what's protecting Little Rags. They need to kill it before they kill Little Rags, and they managed to finally do that. So now can look for you, find something else looking for Kim Kute. One more divides it. Oh, this is so down to the wire. Come on, buddy. There we go. Finally finishes off, and they have broken the bunker. Back in control of the payload. Looking to complete the cap, and we'll even get some late kills on the support members here. They should be able to finish Faith. That is pretty nice. 
See on Flux as well. And you see, okay, they, they chase down Kim Gute first on the Widowmaker, that's fine. But if that happens, Lorax needs to be absolutely shredding through with his uh, with his Bastion. And this is about the time where you would actually perhaps like to see a tank form or something yeah. like that, because you kind of do need to push him from your position. Doesn't have it available. Let's talk about B though as well, because Global Esports, after failing the bunker defense, must now suddenly change up the entire comp in preparation for B. Cart's already moving. Ultimate's on the side of Fire Society, who should look to get very aggressive. Self-destruct forward from Aros just to open things up a little bit, maybe disarray global esports, but it's Red and Evil who dies on the approach and suddenly Fari Society are having to try and get out of the situation as global esports pile on. Fari Society not going to get the momentum into B that they were looking for. That is very important for global esports on the defense. So this isn't something that we saw in our previous series, so it's nice to be able to touch up on it now where both teams wanting to play the Ryan 3-3 Goats Mirror this high ground positioning, especially that bridge next to them as well, to the left, the Xeon Flux, very important for the B point, very difficult for attackers to push through, very difficult for defenders to re-push on too if they lose it. So both teams will be contending around the same section. It's, it's almost like a game of chicken around this wall. Red Evil is again going to be the first to uh, have a geese. Waiting for ultimates as well. Global Esports are close, so they want to delay this fight slightly to get them up. Barry Society kind of feel like they're in the same boat. They decided to go ahead with the sound barrier to just try and push forward. Loot, nice displaced. Shatter comes out behind Barry Society, but that's not what he was looking for. Now Grab gonna get tossed out here from Kim Bute. Look for you is already down, and Barry Society had a golden opportunity for a split second there on getting Luke, but weren't quite able to kill him in that window. And Unfortunately, end up getting rebuffed. Now, only one and a half minutes left. And honestly, keeping Luke alive is such a big deal here. Not only does he get an Earth Shatter down, lands himself a kill, gets himself now back up to 79% on the next Shatter. He's going to have it in the next fight. If that was the kill for Fire East Society, they probably could have converted and snowballed onto other members. They had more ultimates coming online. Satchuk would have had a free Shatter. So many things would have gone well for the, for the team. But sadly, that's not the case now. And about one minute remaining says, if they fail more, they're probably not going to get me. It's Fari Society. They're not even attempting to get high ground anymore, by the way. They've accepted that they've lost that. That it does mean that Global Esports can just drop on top of them anytime they want. That's the thing. It also means they can't really move the cart. Self-destruct just from Xenofly to preserve the mech there. Fari Society have an ultimate advantage, but they don't have a good way of pressing it without okay, members on the floor, this is good. Oh, but Luke's got a huge shatter, that's so ridiculous. Red and Evil already dead as well, that happens so often. So two for two so far, so Fari Society still in it, but they're really having to lean on Satchok, and you'd maybe wish you still had Red and Evil here. Kim Gute still has grab, might not commit it now that Xenofly is dead. They are finally going to wrest control of the cart back from Global Esports. So huge props to the Lucio players because they're the ones that are going to be displacing members. Grandi's Odo gets up in the sky, is able to push Global Esports members off, which forces all of them to fight on the ground. Now this, into the overtime push, has to be the one for Fire Society. They put in the work to get there, they got to reap the rewards now. Fire Society finally in striking distance of point B, especially when he gets to the ultimate. Both grabs, double transcendence. Kim Gute down, there we go. That's an advantage to Fari Society. Xeno fly out of the mech, bigger advantage. Sambara from Faith, even bigger advantage. They're using everything. Fari Society, wow, there's a shatter as well. Global know this is the last fight. If they can maybe just eke it out, then it's all over. They've been able to have a solid defense, but Luke's got to get a lot of work done here, and he suddenly realizes that he is surrounded. His supports are mostly dead, especially now with Xeon Flux down there, not in a good spot. They did get those extra ultimates out of Fari Society, but Fari Society will get all that that more they will cap B. Winning that double grab play as well inside that corridor section for A Society, getting that player advantage. You see all the ultimates being expended by Global Esports, so desperate to try and hold on to this one. And in some ways, you like to imagine they didn't use them. They just accepted the loss, saved them for C, set it for the next defense, and in a position where the goal should be stop Fire Society from completing the map at all costs. Maybe they get B here, but they cannot be allowed to get C. And that's the thing. Look, they shouldn't have time to by rights, but if the momentum is big enough, then they could still do it. Very least could get a lot of distance and smart move by Aros to throw this one forward, make space, finds the Rex too. Numbers advantage, Fiery Society just want to push on that. Don't even have to use more ultimates potentially here. They found Luke gets so huge. And just off that alone, Fiery Society are guaranteed extra momentum and extra progress. And Aros is self-destruct there, cut global esports team in half. Four of the members walk forward, they're thinking, okay, we're gonna go in the opposite direction of the self-destruct. That allows us to dodge 
damage. Half the members get pushed backwards. Lorax and Luke are caught suddenly by that self destruct and Luke by himself. After Little Rex dies, and it just all falls apart. Look at the ultimate yeah. Safari Society. They are in position to camp. It's the thing, we're in one fight territory for both teams. I have a global winner, and there's no extra fight. Or Far East win it, and they cap, and they've already found Luke. And a great shatter from Satchuk. And it looks like it is all over before it starts. Xenofly goes down just as the mech was about to arrive. Xeon Flux is just buying seconds for potential respawners, but I don't think anyone will grab from Kim Yutei gets eaten up. And Far East Society absolutely smack down on top of Global Esports. Gonna be able to finish this cap out as well. And it was long and harrowed. Luke trying to rescue it at the 11th hour here, but no such luck. Only really getting the finish off on Vips and it's all over. But the crying here as Fari Society will complete the cap oh. off a sick self-destruct. Yep. Everything that could possibly go wrong in that last engagement did. You lost your own grab. Your members were staggered. You got no trains whatsoever. 3k self-destruct to finish things off as well and we the got self-destruct so bookended the fight really we got so close to holding this game at various points and we said look maybe things can happen here for global esports and you're having a similar narrative now to what we saw in numbani and i know we're in havana but how many close but no cigar make references can you make in i mean there's a lot more this on kind this of one. defense <laughs> certainly a lot more on this one i would say as well because that, that should have been at multiple points a completed hold for global <laughs> esports that just slips through their fingers that's the real heartbreaker of it. And suddenly they're going to be getting them Numbani flashbacks. In as much as the full cap did come through for Far East Society, and it didn't for Global Esports. But that was balanced upon Far East Society's defense. I will also say Far East Society's offense there was just good. It wasn't like Global Esports totally screwed yeah. things up. Far East Society, especially in the closing stretch, played well. And if they can continue that into the defense, they could honestly just take this one out and tie us up. Well, honestly, based on what how most Havana games has gone so far, not just in containers, but Overwatch League as well. A lot of teams don't end up camping. A lot of teams do not finish this. Yeah. It's rare to see a time bank. Reason for that is because B is hard to push in. It is one of the most difficult points, uh, definitely on this map, but across a lot of the Overwatch maps as well, where you can just get stopped up, lose a lot of time on B, even if you eventually win B. Like we saw, you do so in overtime, and usually 130 is not enough to finish C, which is why it's so astounding and so staggering for Far East Society to actually push through in that amount of time, holding now very close in the gas station. Yeah. They want to try and burn the off, uh, time off the clock early for Global Esports. So they make the correct assumption that it's going to be a Goats v Goats mirror matchup, so they take the early position on top of the still gas station. We'll have to see if it pays off, though. It really failed earlier in the night. It's already looked for you down. So Fari Society not able to get the drop down and connection that they really need here. And Xeon Flux is such a good angle here. Losing Luke is a bit rough, though. And Xenofly as well. Fari Society might have weathered the worst of this. Ooh. Now they can start hopefully backing off. If they don't lose Satchok, it's even better value. So they will get the extra fight. They unfortunately do lose Satchok, but the rest will still at least be able to retreat. So like I said, you get an extra fight. And I think even if they lost one member, they have to back off anyway. They must reset here because their respawn distance is so much longer. The longer, they stay, here, the the longer they stay here, the more members they risk losing. So Fire Society, despite currently winning, have to get out ASAP. What they do at least get by the time they've regrouped, and it will be long before this card even approaches the cap, they'll have a huge advantage in terms yeah. of ultimates. That's really the trade-off, right? That's the trade-off for the risk you take is that if you do win early, you're going to possibly win big here, get that ultimate economy I'm running early, and now the grab comes down. There it is, and it's not like Global Esports have any answers. Fari Society should just use this to collect kills for free, charge up the rest of their ultimates, and burn even more time off the clock for Global Esports. Already one and a half minutes just about lacking. Extra stag resort and Xenoflay will certainly help the case and for Far East Society, look, win condition here should be, even if you lose A, even if you lose B, push it till overtime, push it till you get to that 130 pushing C and Global East was not allowed to snowball through to complete the map. If that happens, Far East Society win, even if we get to the end of the map. Let's even if they get as far as C, Satchok pushing massively forward and no they get a huge lead on Global Esports. And you're right, the no remake on Xeno Fly is massive. That's a holdover from the last fight. So really, Far East Society are getting maximum value right now. And Kim Kute is able to get a grab soon, but the problem is because he's gone down so many times, he's not managed to retain any energy. So it's hard for him to get the same amount of damage output as we're used to seeing out of him. So now for Far East Society, still in a commanding position. Still got good ultimates, but this is a big fight for Global Esports, and coming even, up to six. Even with the grab connecting, the defensive tools are there. Cancel Shatter. Society. Oh man, what a connection from Satchok! That is absolutely gross. And it couldn't have gone worse because you have 
Look for you coming in with that shield bash onto Luke as he tries to go for the Earth Shatter. Seeing that this bash has come through, teammate Setruck drops his own Earth Shatter, which connects onto everybody because there's no more shields. So the team play for Fire Society coming in technically at a deficit because nearly six ultimates for Global Esports. Now Global Esports are really starting to hurt. They still have an ultimate advantage, but they've lost so much time. This is really big for Fire Society, potentially one minute remaining. It's close enough to the spawn for Global, and that's still probably two fights, but I mean, this is really even for Global Esports. The only advantage they have is self-destruct. And Global Esports, like, this is a fight they should be winning, but technically the last fight they should have won too. This one they really need to win. Nice rotation, good wrap around. Fiery Society are not in the position they would like to be here. And that's DMAC onto Arrow. So Global Esports have finally found a Free grab. That's without win, uh, so that's without ultimates being committed, by the way, aside from the rallies. And there is that freebie grab you're talking about. Transcendence from Vips to answer. Oh. Big self struck from Xeno. Fly cares not for your transcendence. And that's finally going to be Global Esports cracking this. But this has been such a far forward hold. I don't think Fiery Society necessarily get a second defense on A, but they have burned so much time on the clock. The job is done. The job has been so well it's done that we're now in a position where... Uh, and it still takes good. We're still in the position where you're, <laughs> you're now pushing into B. Likely this is going to be a successful push on to B, pending how far I mean, want to approach this final section. Do they do this again? They've got ultimates. It's possible, but there's double support ultimates available for Global Esports. If they don't mess that up, Global Esports can still win. Fiery Society, Shatter's going to be out first. Better counter Shatter from Luke this time around, but Satruck still finds a charge. That's one support ultimate off the table. Grab out, Sound Barrier to answer. Fiery Society, a couple of low members, but Arrows can preserve Mech as they find Faith. I think that's enough. Xeon Flux isn't going to get back to this team before these tanks go down. Xeno flies dead. They only get look for you in the counter trade. And again, Self Destruct is still there for Arrows, either to cut off responders and respawners or just to create space. And they're bang diddly done done it. Far East Society are going to tie up our series in an absolutely impressive defense. And now you have to start asking the question, is the reverse sweep possible? We're already in week two. It's a trials team, the second trials team, not even the first one. That was just that good. Is attempting to make the reverse sweep happen. But what is really convincing about the series now is the fact that two out of two of the most recent maps that we've seen after the break in the middle have gone the way of Far East Society and they've looked fantastic for Fire Society. Yeah. Global Esports are making more and more mistakes. They're losing more and more fights that they probably shouldn't be losing. And Fire Society are winning in positions where you're now not supposed to see them win. A 130 push onto C probably shouldn't happen. Yeah. A full push onto B in overtime probably shouldn't happen. So many of these scenarios that shouldn't happen for Fire Society that do are starting to let you uh, put you in a position where you do believe the reverse sweep is possible. And let's even just talk about those other unlikely things. Even if they hadn't capped out B, even if they hadn't capped out C, at the end of the day it wouldn't have mattered because they fully held on A. And it was because they played a smart game tactically. They backed it up with strong macro, with good execution. Honestly, on the whole, suddenly it looks like when both teams are a bit more fired up, yep. Far East Society looked the better. At the start of this half, we said reverse sweep unlikely coming into Nepal look touch wood but right now Far East Society are playing better than Global Esports and now you have to start looking at Temple of Anubis as a bit of an outlier Busan I'll still give to the way of Global Esports in terms of okay they played a better 3-3 three -three mirror mm -hmm. there despite okay losing some of the neutrals or going even in the neutrals the rest of the Busan was pretty much in their favour which could speak well to them now going to Nepal They've however, got, they've you, got look, hope so. however you look at Temple of Anubis and say the reason that's an outlier is they had a type of composition where Kim Gute on the water does such a good job specifically in that setup yeah. on that map uh, they bleed off all the time on A they do so well across the entire map that you don't have a correct answer sadly from the side of Far East Society then you go into Numbani then you go into Havana where that's not the case anymore yes Kim Gute brings out the Widow again not the same map not the same kind of setup not the same kind of result sadly and that means yeah. we go back to a 3-3 mirror this time Far East Society win that 3-3 mirror which now gives you confidence or gives everyone confidence me included that going into Nepal if it's 3-3 mirror again Far East Society can definitely win Absolutely they can, and look, even if they don't, let's also just look at what this means, really, because compared to Green Leaves, this is now a better result so far for Far East Society, who, again, we say is the second of the two teams to come into trials, a team that's never beaten Green Leaves before in their own right. Even if they don't beat Global Esports here, you look at other teams like yeah. Jupiter that are now in striking distance, and suddenly it feels like Far East Society is going to be able to strike at them.
big questions need to be asked for global esports i think and you know we are going to be addressing those questions very soon with answers hopefully it's two and two apiece now fire society attempting to make this dream happen is it going to happen find out after this break Welcome back once again to Overwatch Contenders Pacific Season 2 here for the finale of 
day number one in week two with our first ever fifth map so far this season and possibly our first ever reverse sweep as well. It depends on yeah. how much you believe in the underdog story walking into it. I mean, so far this has worked out to be way more hype than Japan Bowl ever was, so I apologize to you, dear viewer. But in all seriousness, look, we were talking about this just ahead of the break. Look, at halftime, we said reverse sweep, unlikely. And Far East Society did just look outclassed by Global Esports. But now Far East Society are firing on all cylinders. I feel like they're finally showing us what they're capable yep. of. And what they're capable of is playing better than Global Esports. That's where we sit now as we go into Nepal. And specifically playing better in the kind of composition that walking into Nepal is going to be definitive of that map, which is to say the 3-3 Goat's Mirror. That's what was specifically run for the majority of Havana outside of the bunker on top of A. You look at B, you look at C of the original offense for uh, Far East Society, mm -hmm. winning that on the mirror. You look at the A defense, which was a successful completed hold. That is a 3-3 mirror as well. One basically across the board by Far East Society. So if you are looking at a position where uh, you, you look at Nabani as an outlier, say, oh, they won because of X or Y strategy or whatever like that. Well, it's like, well, if that position, that scenario doesn't play out again, they don't win again. However, if they win on a default composition that both teams are very likely to play, that's when you are convinced they can actually take the series. Yeah, to the point where I almost wonder if maybe global esports need to just not play into that 3-3 mirror. Like, That'd be wild. I, I feel weird saying that, but I, I partially say it because on Nepal, you can play things like, you know, your, your triple DPS with the Wrecking Ball. You've got some far options. Heck, even playing 3-3 with like a May, we do see a fair bit of that, but... We don't know if they've got that in the pocket necessarily, and if it's I, the 3-3 mirror, I don't like their chances. I I would say even if they had it in their pocket, it would be a huge risk to take. Yeah. You would already be in some ways admitting defeat. You would always be also be putting yourself on the back foot. So it's a tough place to be in for sure for Global Esports. Not something I thought I'd be saying in this matchup. We do see both teams squaring up, both on GOATS, both on Winston 3-3. And we should be seeing a bit of a cliffside rotation. You see the Winston's already prepping to jump. Both should be going over now, so heavy skirmishes right away. Oh, early catch on Aros with Boop. Excellent opening there by Faith, who has been so consistent at finding high-impact Boops. And with that, Global Esports are just going to flatten Far East Society in the neutral fight. Which is huge because it's either been even or kind of losing for Global Esports, but now they've successfully very much won this one handedly, one-sided all the way. Massive pickups here, early cap as well, exactly what you want to see if you are Global Esports. Suddenly it looks like maybe status quo is restored, maybe we've gone back to Busan, but only time will tell. So only the first few bits of percentage, Global Esports don't have ultimates just yet, Far East Society can still push in with resounding success. Start on Red and Evil is nice. So that just barely ahead in ult charge. And this is where if Global Esports can't take the heat, just yet back off to the point itself, which a lot of members are doing. Maintaining the energy charge for Kimbutain, very important because Red and Evil had to start from scratch. And that's the big advantage they have. Well, that's to say nothing of a boot from Faith once again to just demolish Fari Society's rotation. I was going to say it's Kimbutain leading in ult charge for the grab, whereas Fari Society were keeping even all across the board. But not anymore, they're not with that one Global Esports power ahead. And you got to look at the context of these fights. The context being that no ultimates have been expended by either team so far. Let's take a look at Faith's POV as we walk in. How does he get that one. initial kill? Oh. Gets the boop on the Aros. No fly right available. And that's just an easy pickup. This is the kind of uh, kind of play that we need to be seeing from Global Esports. So Faith has, has been setting up kills left, right, and center. Yeah, we don't see the same coming out of Grandi's auto. And speaking of which, she's the first casualty in this grab. Relatively expected result. Good on Fari Society. I was going to say good on them to not burn any needless ultimates, but they popped a Primal Rage that they probably should have kept. And now this is where for Global Esports, they still have five ultimates. Counting the sound barrier for Faith, which will be up pretty soon. Xeon Flex saves the Transcendence as well. The only casualty so far. And for Far East Fire Society, they're at a 75% deficit for the objective, and they've barely touched the point. They've barely seen the point. They've barely got a one kill. And they keep getting absolutely destroyed in the rotation by Faith, getting opportunistic kills. Vips has to pop Transcendence, partially for his own sake, but does take one tool off the table. They still have Sound Barrier. They need to get something out, maybe the self-destruct, maybe this grab that Red Neville has coming up soon. They also need to survive Luke's 
Primal Rage. So it's got to come down to Red Needle. He has to be the key uh, player here. Nips off the edge. That wasn't even oh, a move. Yeah. That was just slip and sliding. And Faith also finds a boop on Red Needle, who was so close to a grab otherwise. And I feel like so much of this can honestly just come down to Faith getting opportunistic kills all the way up until that final fight. Fari Society are going to have to do a better job of keeping tabs on Faith in that. Well, the good news is every other round from here can't be Sanctum. There can't be a map where Lucio just gets an environmental kill on the somebody start to play with. Even like the, you said, the last one towards the end there, the one in Red and Evil, that's the guy that can turn things around. He's got a grab coming online, obviously not going to happen because he goes again. down. I mean, that's really smart timing. As much as it's expected, like Aros, if anyone's going to get boops, right, it's Aros right there. Like you said, the fly isn't available. He's literally just used it to get there. Same so, with Satchuk on the jump. Yeah, this is the thing. Faith is, is setting up for these. He's being opportunistic, like I said, and it's having huge impact because it happens mid-rotation. And here's the final one on Red and Evil. This one's a little bit Waiting different. for the bubble and just exactly the right member. 93% of the chance, just every single correct member that you want to try and different story, okay. We're at match point now, yeah. for real. Global Esports definitely in the lead. Again, looking very much like Busan. This is where we also get to see Satrock return to the Reinhardt. Same is obviously true for Luke, but we have seen Satrock edging out Luke in the mirror matchup. Which has to be what Fire Society lean into if they want to win. Oh. Yeah, so far, Reigns. Yeah, Satrock goes in really, really deep, and luckily it pays off, at least in that they get Luke before Satrock dies. They need to take advantage of that tempo, but they lose look for you, and they didn't get Lil Rax, who was otherwise low, so suddenly Fari Society had to back off, and it was because Satrock got bumped further away from the team. Again, Faith got a great opportunity. And Seal Flux nearly went down there, but nearly isn't what's going to actually kill him. Look for you, on the other hand, got super low, and then was actually finished off. So Global Esports now far ahead in a lot of in a lot of departments. Vips is keeping up, though, so that's something they can lean into. For the rest of Fari Society, though, they just have to find this quick uh, next fight quick and early. Man, this is a tough situation now for Fari Society, who have been unable to turn the momentum around on control maps so far. Have an opportunity here. Stun on Faith is nice. They do finish him off. They need to be able to commit their transcendence at the right time, though. Rav can still be a winner. Could still be for Kim Butei, and that's really what Vips is holding Tron to Transcendence for. You can't wait too long here because there's more and more resources coming online for Fari Society. There it goes, and there's the answer from Vips, and that's with Luke going down too. Self-Destruct is nice, it finds Red and Evil, which means no counter grab, and it also demakes Aros, so it's all on Satchok right now, who's taking the Soul Tank, but he oh, gets okay, it! He finds a nice big fat one, and that's partially because Luke was dead previous. There's no shield to block it, Satchok does get surrounded, and Luke able to finish that off, but they have Force Global Esports off the point. Global Esports decide they want to commit in though. They've got a sound barrier and they had Luke Shatter, but it's a little bit slow to finish these off. Red Needle's back in the mix. He should throw out a grab. They could keep this alive if they want. They need to not be too... Oh, man. I was down to the way. You could this one either way, but is a fun. real heartbreaker for Fari Society where you want to put the team on the shoulders of Sadchuk. He lifts them all up. He puts them all on there, stands up. Lifts him high with both his hands, but for Far East Society, look, dire straits. Now you're nearly 90% for Global Esports. The reinforcements are there. The reinforcements did the work as well. And now we're looking at a potential three and two victory. I feel like you almost just take the, uh, you know, play the odds there, throw the ultimates in, but instead they're going to have to do it in this fight. Jump the strike lane up. They try and get the bump on Luke to get behind his shield, but they will at least find Faith with the charge up. Now Luke goes down. Grandy Zorto able to finish that one off. Bari Society do finally get the fight they need, but man, they would have liked to have had that 20% to go. And this is where now Fire Society got to play the game of their lives, at least for this match so far, because it's a 0 to 99% deficit. And that's just to get us to the third and final round to tie break this entire map. And Global Esports in such a comfortable position, they got to make some big mistakes here, deliver the game over to Fire Society to really be in a position to lose. When you are this far ahead, even if you lose the next few fights in a row, you should be building up to an insurmountable lead in ultimates eventually, which will get you the point. The reality is they're already building to that insurmountable lead for this coming fight. They've nearly got Shattered. They've nearly got Grav. Fari Society only have one of those. And they've also only got one defensive ultimate. Zeon Flux has his transcendence. I mean, it's just going to be a huge tall order. Double Shatter out. Luke, I think, gets the better end of that exchange. But, oh, no follow-up either side of it. Grab. Kim Gute has grabbed. There is where their lack of defensive ultimate is going to unravel Fari Society. 
That should be the last one. 99% Global Esports will take the fight. They will regain control of the point. They will not let this series slip away from them like that. It won't be the triumphant 4 and 0. It will instead be a harrowing 3 and 2, but it will still be a win. And when you want to avoid relegations, it's the wins that count. And now this heartbreak has extended from just a single fight on Nepal, on trying to the entire series overall because it was such a valiant effort. A two-map comeback in the second half, a dominant two-map comeback. You're really a very deserving comeback as well, but we get back to control. And this game mode, if this is a game mode that you cannot wrestle with, again, if we want to look at Temple of the Nubis and say, that one was an outlier. That one was Global Esports pulling out a composition, pulling out a strategy and executing on the said strategy that Far East Society could not deal with. You look at the other maps, Nirvani and Havana, that's Far East Society playing to their actual potential. Yeah. But then, let's not forget about control. Let's not forget about Busan. What happened on Busan? That was also a mirror, however, going in the way somewhat heavily. 2 and 0, you can see the score line in favor of Global Esports translated back into a 2 and 0 score line on the pool again on the same game mode. And it does feel like part of what unravels Far East Society on control is the fact that you take the same fight over and over again on the same part of the map essentially in as much as at least with escort you know there's the momentum there's the literal physical momentum of the cart moving and how that plays into how you approach fights it seems that without that extra factor when really for the most part yeah there's positioning and all that jazz there's where specifically you take the fight you're just kind of squaring up one to one and they don't seem to be as clean on the macro game. They don't get as much connection and you even see it in little things like how many opportunities a player like Faith creates for his team and you don't see Grandi Zordo creating the same number of opportunities when you're in that yeah. far more mirrored situation. It's those little things that can edge it out for you and it edged it out for Global Esports. And Faith was one of the players from last week when they played against uh, Green Leaves that I really noticed as well. This Lucio player yeah. was able to get a lot done he had a lot of impact on the game when a Lucio has notable impact on the game that's when they are standout players because usually the impact is a little invisible okay they're landing sound barriers as they should be they're using their speed boost they're healing it in AoE they're doing all the typical things you expect them to do but when they start to really get noticed like whoa that happened this is yeah. something that really changed the game that's when you know something special is occurring and when you get to a map like Sanctum that is what can change the momentum of a game almost permanently for that map but 100 to 0 was absolutely huge you have to start asking the question of what would have happened had we gone to Village. You won't get the answer to that one. Yeah. What you can know is even if we got to Village and that was a win for Far East Society, the other two go the way of Global Esports anyway. Best result then being a 1-2 on the pool. Still not good enough for a win. I also think we could have seen a very different Far East Society if they'd maybe won any of those opening engages. Look, let's, let's ignore Shrine for now because part of that was just on the boot that uh, Faith got on Aros. Let's oh, that's go Sanctum. Ahead. Yeah, uh, sorry, Sanctum, you're right. Sh whatever. But let's look at Shrine in that, uh, you know, that was where Satrock had to commit onto Luke. And, I mean, it was... It was a reasonable commit. It was a risky commit. They did get Luke first. But again, the way it ends up actually happening is then Faith bumps Satrock further away from his team. The team, in order to keep Satrock alive while killing Luke, has to wrap back around. They're kind of split. Mm -hmm. They kill Luke. Satrock then dies. And you've got five members of Global Esports clustered together on the point. You've got two halves of yep. Far East Society around the sides of the point. And even though you got the earlier kill, even though you had a brief window, you can't capitalize on it. If you see them win that fight, you could see a totally different situation where they have momentum and just run away with it. And the thing is, look, you, you, may, tr you may call it, okay, well, uh, Satchok has been mostly outperforming Luke in the Ryan to Ryan mirror. Winston's will say, you know, you haven't seen enough of it. It looks like Winston Satchok doesn't have quite the same amount of impact. When you start yeah. looking at some of the other members, Faith was definitely the more outstanding Lucio player. I would even argue that Kim Kute is definitely the better, the more outstanding Absolutely. player as well. So once you take the Ryan to the equation, that's one matchup where you do win if you're Far East Society. Mm -hmm. You take that winning matchup out because both Ryans are dead now. Suddenly Kim Kute gets turned on because he has got the huge amount of energy available. He's got a huge amount of damage out put Red Neville's that's just unfortunately dying in really poor positions mm. doesn't have the same kind of output Faith is making more plays in Grandi's auto and just by just at minimum these two players not even looking at the other three remaining players there's enough of an advantage player to player wise for Global Esports to kind of edge them out if the Ryans are taken out of the equation and it does also feel that Far East Society is such a momentum oriented team it's you know we've seen it both on the on the offenses especially on on the payload oriented maps I mean that's even including the static points of 
Everton and Barney. We saw good snowball momentum on their initial attack there and, you know, reasonably so on the defense as well. They unfortunately mucked up that subsequent fight when they had the ultimate advantage, but that's just a one-off. We, you know, call that a singular mistake, right? And then you also look at Havana. Again, when the momentum is there, they get so much that's on the offense and on the defense. But when they don't get that momentum to start with, and this is what control exacerbates. If a team struggles to start with momentum, it's where you really start to see which teams are unable to regain momentum yep. or stop another team's momentum again on that static kind of map. And I think you also, when you look at the series overall, let's, let's roll out control for a second. Despite control taking two game modes out of the possible five maps there, roll that out for a second and just look at the, the other three available. Yeah, that's or, a two to one. Uh, the other three available there. That's actually two to one. It is, but also then you have to look at Temple Vanubis as the map once again for a team like Fire Society because um, to be fair to them, I'll, I'll correct myself by saying, okay, they did kind of deal with the bunker eventually because they had the nano boost, they had the EMPs, they were able to lay all those they in struggled. and eventually just get, get past it. They got past it and they got to a position where they at least forced a time bank yeah. like three to two. Um, they got a three to two result, uh, two to three rather result at the end of the day. If they did that faster or they dealt with Kimute faster or they had a better Anubis, if they win Anubis, this is a three to one result. And we, we, yeah. we look at controls and say, despite not winning that, that's how they win. But now, you know, if they're not going to be able to win Temple of Anubis and they can't win any of the control maps, the best they can do is two out of, two out of five. Exactly. You, you run the math on it at the end of the day and, well, you see how it falls. And speaking